in what is expected to give a big fillip to India's civil nuclear energy capacity and help meet its target of producing 100 gigawatt energy by 2047. The Modi government today passed an overarching law in parliament to open the entire range of nuclear business to the private sector for the first time. Currently, private companies or even state governments are not allowed in the nuclear power sector. This has led to India's slow progress in harnessing nuclear energy even as our energy demand has surged. India currently generates 8 gigawatt nuclear power, which is just 1.6% of the total energy mix from over 25 nuclear reactors in 7 power plants across the country. Of these reactors, 21 are pressurized heavy water reactors and 4 are light water reactors. Title Shanti or the Sustainable Harnessing and Advancement of Nuclear Energy for Transforming India Bill 2025 will repeal the Atomic Energy Act 1962 and the Civil Liability for Nuclear Damage Act 2010. While the Atomic Energy Act prohibited participation of private players in the nuclear sector, the lack of clarity around suppliers' liability and the nuclear operator's right to recourse in the Civil Liability for Nuclear Damage Act 2010, or CNLD, became a big stumbling block for private companies to take up projects in India. So what is the Shanti Bill all about and how it will help India harness its nuclear potential and how it is different from the previous two laws? I am Moshumidas Gupta and I'll explain some of the important provisions of the bill. One of the most important features of the proposed legislation is that it will open up the nuclear sector to private players. The bill proposes that besides government-owned or government-controlled department, institutions, corporations, any company established or registered in India under Section 2, Clause 20 of the 2013 Companies Act shall be eligible to apply to the central government for a license to build own, operate or decommission a nuclear power plant or reactor. However, private companies incorporated outside India will not be allowed. So the major hurdle of only government companies and that too central government PSUs which could take up nuclear power projects so far has been removed. But both the government companies as well as the private companies will need a license. You might ask why do they need license and safety authorization? because nuclear is a restrictive and critical area where you need to have oversight. Private companies can also apply for a license for fabrication of nuclear fuel including conversion, refining and enrichment of uranium-235 up to such threshold value or production, use, processing or disposal of other prescribed substances as may be notified by the center. Private companies will also be allowed transportation or storage of nuclear fuel or spent fuel, import or export, acquisition or possession of nuclear fuel or prescribed equipment, any technology or software that may be used for the development, production or use of nuclear energy. However, research, development and innovation activities will be exempted from license. While the government will open the nuclear sector to private players, it will keep three things to itself. Number one is deciding who all get to come into nuclear business. For this, the licensing regime has been brought in. Number two, the government will keep the safety and compliance infrastructure to itself. The Atomic Energy Regulatory Board, which has now been given statutory powers, will have complete oversight to ensure safety compliance and technology compliance across all nuclear power plants owned by the government or any company. The third thing which the government has kept to itself is the fuel. The bill states that while setting up the facilities, the source material and fissile material in any form produced within India or imported shall remain under the surveillance and control of the central government for the purpose of accounting and shall be subject to such safeguards as may be specified by the central government. 
the spent fuel shall be safely stored for a cooling period of such duration to be determined by the Atomic Energy Regulatory Board or for such further duration as the central government may direct before being delivered to the central government for its subsequent management or repatriated to the country of origin. The heavy water used in nuclear facility shall also remain under the supervision of the central government. The center will also be solely involved in mining and processing of certain source material in onshore or offshore areas containing uranium and thorium. The decommissioning of such mines shall also be carried out only by the government. These are the three very critical areas which the government has kept to itself. The bill also proposes to strengthen the implementation of security safeguards and clearly specifies the condition when a nuclear operator is liable for damages in case of an accident and provides for establishing the Atomic Energy Redressal Advisory Council to facilitate settlement of disputes. The Shanti Bill also clearly spells out the operator's liability in case of nuclear damage or accident. It says that the operator of the nuclear installation shall be liable for nuclear damage if a nuclear incident has occurred in the nuclear installation or during the transportation of the nuclear material from that installation. An operator, however, will not be liable if a nuclear incident leading to damage to the installation has been caused due to a grave natural disaster of an exceptional character or an act of armed conflict, hostility, civil war, insurrection or terrorism. The bill spells out the limits of liability of the operators. Unlike the Civil Liability for Nuclear Damage Act 2010, the Shanti Bill lays out graded limits of liability for different categories of nuclear installation. It was not there earlier. For instance, in installation with reactors having thermal power up to 150 megawatt, the limit of operator liability has been fixed at Rs 100 crore. The liability goes up to a maximum of 3000 crore for reactors of thermal power over 3600 megawatt. In the CLND Act 2010, the liability of an operator for each nuclear incident was Rs 1500 crore for nuclear reactors having thermal power equal to or above 10 megawatt, implying that the liability would be the same for a reactor having thermal power of 10 megawatt or 3000 megawatt. However, the maximum amount of liability of a nuclear operator in case of a nuclear incident has been put at the rupee equivalent of 300 million special drawing rights, which comes to approximately 3000 crore or such higher amount specified by the central government. Special drawing rights are an international reserve asset created by the International Monetary Fund, the value of which is determined and allocated by it to the member countries. Clause 71 of the bill also provides for imposition of a punishment of imprisonment up to five years or fine or with both for grave offences and a lesser punishment for less serious offences. Stringent penalties have been proposed for, a, for any person involved in breach or violation of the law. The penalty varies from Rs 5 lakh for minor breaches and up to maximum of Rs 1 crore for severe violation. The bill also empowers the centre to assume full liability for nuclear installation not operated by it if it is of the opinion that it is necessary in public interest to do so. Clause 15 of the bill imposes an obligation upon the operator to take out before beginning the operation of a nuclear installation insurance policy or such other financial security covering the liability as specified in the second schedule and to renew the same from time to time. However, the nuclear installation owned by the central government is exempted from this obligation. The Shanti Bill also proposes to establish a nuclear liability fund to compensate for damages by the operator. In the Shanti Bill, the clause dealing with the right to recourse has been tweaked, where earlier the CLND Act 2010 provided for the operator's right for recourse where a it is expressly provided for in a contract in writing, b where the nuclear incident has resulted as a consequence of an act of supplier 
or his employee, which includes supply of equipment or material with patent or latent defects or substandard services, and C, the nuclear incident has resulted from the act of commission or omission of an individual done with the intent to cause nuclear damage. The Shanti Bill has removed the supplier's liability as mentioned in Clause B uh, of the CLND Act 2010. The Shanti Bill states that the operator's right to recourse against the supplier will now be based on what is specified in the contract signed between the two parties. The earlier provision had created apprehension among suppliers and was seen as one of the main reasons that private players stayed away from investing in the nuclear energy sector in India. The bill also provides for establishment of Atomic Energy Redressal Advisory Council for redressal of disputes. It also lays out an elaborate structure for compensation. It empowers the central government to establish a Nuclear Damage Claims Commission to consider the extent and severity of nuclear damage and expedite claims for compensation. The bill also states that no civil court shall have jurisdiction to entertain any suit or proceedings in respect of any matter which the central government, the Atomic Energy Regulatory Board, the Appellate Tribunal, the Claims Commission or the Claims Commissioner, as the case may be, is empowered to determine or adjudicate under this Act and no injunction shall be granted by any court or other authority in respect of any action taken or to be taken in pursuance of any power conferred by under this act. That is all for now. Thank you.